everyone. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Um, I wanted to be honest, I just started doing public speaking earlier this year, thanks to Women Talk Design. Um, and this is my very first time speaking at a local meetup event like this. And not to mention... <laughs> Thank you. And not to mention Designers and Gifts is my longtime uh, favorite design events in San Francisco. So I feel very honored to stand here uh, alongside with all these awesome designers to share what I have learned uh, designing for inclusion with blockchain. So first of all, I want to tell you a story of my very first um, fundraiser that took almost six months to settle. So my birthday was in February. Instead of buying something fancy or going somewhere nice, I started a fundraiser on Facebook for Project Tango, a nonprofit organization that I care very much about. I raised $300 in total, exceeding my goal of $200 24 hours before the fundraiser ended. So it was great. And then fast forward to a few weeks ago, and this Project Tango admin contacted me saying, hey, we never got the money. Can you check? So I double checked with the treasurer, um, and he also confirmed they never received a, a check of $300 in the past six months. So I opened a support ticket with Facebook. Someone from the payment team confirmed with me, well, actually, there was a check. They sent it out six to eight weeks after the fundraiser finished. So please check uh, because we're actually collaborating with another organizations that help distribute the funds. And that should you know, send out a check to the address where Project Tango registered with another nonprofit uh, registration search services. So why this has to be so complicated? All I wanted to do was to raise money for where it's needed. So can we make all these middle layers go away? So then we can bring the organizations and individuals in need, every project, closer to who help. And what can we do to, you know, to improve, to um, be more, you know, minimize these obstacles. So if there are fewer hoops to jump through, wouldn't it be more encouraging for more people wanted to help? So let's shift gear a little bit here. So uh, by a show of hands, how many of you have heard about the Bitcoin craze last year? So keep your hands up if you, that's your first time heard about the term blockchain. And keep your hands up if you know blockchain is actually only one of the many cryptocurrencies that build on top of blockchain. And keep your hands up if you have happened to work on a blockchain project that has nothing to do with Bitcoin. So as you can see, we all have very different understanding, uh, knowledge or understanding about this technology. It's new to most people, myself included. So it's not until earlier this year I got to work on uh, an enterprise blockchain project. And not until then I got to learn more and understand it better what other benefits this technology has to offer. So what's blockchain? Here's my 30 second super simplified definition of it. As you can tell from the name, blockchain is blocks and chain. <laughs> so one block of information, it contains data. For example, like who and who exchanged how much. And hash of that block, think of like a digital stamp that's uniquely only for that particular block. And the hash of the previous block. So then all this block, contains transactional information securely validated and connected via a digital chain. 
So basically, all the participants in this network, they're sharing the, ex the same set of data in real time. In a nutshell, it's, it's a system that's where the amount of trust required and the number of mi middlemen needed are minimized. So take this fundraiser story of mine, uh, for example. If blockchain were behind this donation, so the whole fund distribution process would probably only going to take maybe up to a few hours, not months to complete. Because in that case, there will be only blocks of codes contain all this data between me and a nonprofit that I want to help. And all these middle layers of Facebook, you know, distribution organizations, and you know, all these middle layer facilitating this transaction, they will, be, will not be needed. And in the context of my uh, enterprise blockchain project, we partner with several financial institutions of different sizes across multiple continents and building a long landing platform. So by using blockchain, we digitize most of the currently manual workflow. So all the participants will have access to digital assets, documents, etc., of the exact same copy. So that helps to minimize the risk of fraud and double spending. The biggest challenge for design is how do we make this already complex? How do we go about to make this complex process more understandable? And what can we do to highlight the benefit of transparency, which is one of the positive characteristics that blockchain has to offer? So here are a couple of uh, principles that we learned along the way. One is consistency builds trust, and trust will increase inclusivity. So this is an example of the, the, the visual mark, uh, mark, markups that we create uh, at the end. And I want to take visual design as an example. So think about all this consistent choice of color, icons, typography. We'll make, make it convincing that someone has put a lot of effort and thinking behind to make this look understandable, legitimate, especially when it comes to, this actually relates to one of the most intimate aspects of people's life, money. So we don't want people come at it with the question, is this a legitimate application that I can trust, that, that you will handle my money, I handle my loans? So we want them to look at it. This is our rational choices of visual design that give them a clear hint of um, visual hierarchy. So they know what demands attention, what requires action, and what gives information. And by the way, all these choices of colors, font, size, font, weight, we went through the usual exercise of creating mood boards, uh, checking the ADA compliance, so we are ready to serve the user with accessibility needs in the future. Another principle that we learn is we use friction to make the invisible visible. What do I mean by that? So on the surface, the system probably can look like your usual conventional database application, but because the technology used behind the scene, blockchain, any action taken on the data will not only permanently be captured on the system level, but also all participants will be notified about it. But user won't be able to see it. What we did is bringing fiction into critical workflow so we can provide a sense of responsibility to make people be aware there's some consequence of their um, action. And this is an example of everybody can recognize it's a pop-up dialogue. Some of you may hate it because usually you slow you down, stop you from doing what you're trying to do. But what 
well, our intention here is trying to teach the users that, hey, there's something different, there's something critical I want you to pay attention to. So then they will know that there's some different impact of their usual action so they can see the difference of the new technology. So this design sounds probably a little awfully familiar to many of you. Maybe even a little outdated, you think? So what exactly is different about designing for blockchain? Well, the good news is, for, good, for starters, I would say you can come to the problems with almost the same old human-centered design stuff. But because it's possible that end user may not know they're using a product service that's built on top of blockchain, we need to use the existing design patterns to make the invisible and unfamiliar experiences visible and familiar. As long as we can help people easier to understand what it is, more likely to accept how it works, and more willing to use it, it's all good. So blockchain is new, so no best practices have been defined so far, and we designers actually have a lot of skills and opportunities to set things right from the ground up. By sticking to the fundamental design principles, again, they're not outdated, what, what's needed is you need to adapt and evolve and use them well. And always remember, remember our favorite mantra is listen to your users. So we can and we should feel less daunted to get hands on designing for blockchain. So we need more designers with an inclusion mindset for, because this technology has great potentials of bringing those in need closer to those who want to help. So thank you for listening.